I greet each and every one of you in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask that you open up your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, commencing at the 13th verse and concluding at the 24th. It matters not what translation that you have, as long as it says B-I-B-L-E, that is the book for me. Peter says in the 13th verse, So get yourselves ready. Prepare your minds to act. Control yourselves. And look forward in hope as you focus on the grace that comes when the anointed Jesus Christ returns and is completely revealed to you. Be like obedient children as you put aside the desires you used to pursue when you didn't know better. Since the one who called you is holy, be holy in all you do. For the scripture says, you are to be holy for I am holy. If you call on the Father, who judges everyone without partiality according to their actions, then you should live in reverence and awe while you live out the days of your exile. You know that a price was paid to redeem you from following the ways handed on to you by your ancestors. It was not paid with things that perish like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the anointed, who was like a perfect and unblemished sacrificial lamb. God determined to send him before the world began, but he came into the world in these days for your sake. Through him, you've been brought to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and him from the very reason that you, your faith and hope are in him. Verse number 22. Taken care to purify your souls through your submission to the truth. You can experience real love for each other. So love each other deeply from a pure heart. You have been reborn, not from seed that eventually dies, but from seed that is eternal, through the word of God that lives and endures forever. Whereas the prophet Isaiah said, all life is like the grass, and its glory like a flower, the grass will wither and die, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. This is the word that has been preached to you. Saints of God, as we begin to look at 1 Peter chapter 13 and verse number 25 tonight, I want to simply talk from the subject, put in that work. Why don't you go ahead and type that in the chat or write it in your notes or even declare that to yourself out loud. Put in that work. Because that is what God is expecting from each and every one of us in this Bible study tonight. Because it is a spiritual truth and reality, Reverend Bounds, that God is at work individually and corporately in each and every one of our lives. Therefore, as the people of God, he is requiring us to do three particular things if we are out to please him and him alone. Number one, God wants us to match his energy. God wants us to be like him. I had a professor at Princeton that said that God loved his son Jesus so much 
that he wants to populate this whole earth with a whole bunch of little Jesuses. Because that is what Philippians 2 and 5 is talking about when it says that we must be ministry minded. Because Jesus did not come to be served, but he came to serve and to give himself as a living sacrifice so that we could indeed have eternal life. Therefore, we must match God's energy. Number two, we must put in that work because as Paul told his young son in the ministry, Timothy, we must stir up the gift of God that God has planted in us even before we were formed in our mother's womb. Because I stop by here to let you know tonight that God surely has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of our lives. And the good news is that he wants us to know that when he begins to move in our lives. It is not going to be by accident because God knows exactly what he is doing and he knows exactly what he is saying to all of us in this Bible study tonight. Because Deacon Latif, one thing is for sure, God is not going to miss his words because he knows you both from the inside out. Yes. He created you and he indeed knows what he wants to do in and through you. Therefore, you just got to be willing to say to him, here I am, God, any way you want to use me, yes. I will be satisfied because I'm willing and able to put in that work and I just need you to therefore be patient with me because I know that you are not through with me yet. And that is why when Joshua was called to be Israel's leader, God didn't miss his words. He told him three times, almost in the same breath. In Joshua chapter 1, verse number 6, verse number 8, and verse number 9, he told him to be strong, be bold, and be very courageous because I have an assignment for your life. I have anointed you for this particular assignment and I'm not taking any excuses from you in this particular assignment because I want to use you as a demonstration of the Spirit's power. So you got to put in that work. You got to match God's energy. And if you're going to match Jesus' energy, you know that even at 13 years old, when he was left behind in the temple in Jerusalem, yeah. when the parents were looking for him because he had strayed away from the pilgrim's journey, when they went up to Zion and they were about to go back home, Jesus said in the pages of sacred scripture what each and every one of us ought to be echoed in tonight and that is that I must be about my father's business. Yes. And even with all of the chaos and the confusion that is going on in my life I know that God's word is true for Philippians 1 and 6 says that he who has begun a good work in us will complete it at the day of Jesus Christ. The axle on my car may indeed be broken and I might have to pay a mechanic, but I still get a yet praise in my spirit because I know that the God I serve and the God I worship is worthy to be praised both from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Yes, yes, yes. So you gotta be about the Father's business. Because God wants you to know tonight, saints of God. And this is the relevant and rhema word that he wants to step into our spirit as a congregation. He wants us to know the acronym that we must grind. G-R-I-N-D. Because that acronym simply means that God resides in non-stop determination. 
You got to be willing as a child of God to go out there even when the storms of life are raging and give God all that you got and leave everything else on the floor because you know that 99 and a half just won't do. You want to give God all of you and you want to be able to submit to his sovereignty no matter what is going on in your life because you know as the saints of old used to say way back in the day that God will never put more on you yes, yes, yes. than you can bear yes. uh, and that is why I thank God I always try to figure out in the 30 minutes that we are having Bible study in the prayer meeting starts at 6 o'clock. Why did my superintendent choose the particular scripture that she chose? She chose tonight, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 22. And God told me to tell you tonight that that is what my prayer is for you. Because I want God to open the eyes of your heart so that you may be able to see him clearly. And so that you may be able to know that God is sitting on the throne and he is taking care of his own. Therefore, yes, you may be put in embarrassing situations because as I told you last week, when you are indeed have a living hope and a living faith, God is going to scrutinize. You and put you in situations to see just how deep, not your religion is, Daniel, but to see how deep your relationship is. Are you going to fold under pressure when you lock yourself out of the car? Or are you going to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done? Because as Romans chapter 8 and verse number 18 says, I do not consider the suffering of this present time worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us in fact, God is going to get some glory out of the gloomy situations that I am going through because nothing is greater than or equal to the God of my salvation. Yes, yes. Because you must understand, my friends, that God wants to put you on display. That's why he puts you in distressing situations. That's why you gotta persevere your way through the persecution. And that's why you gotta be an example as you go through the examination that he is setting before you. God wants to put you as an exhibit so that people may know through your lifestyle mm -hmm. that yes God is real hmm. because through your testimony people will experience the true and living God that is why you shouldn't be ashamed of going through whatever adverse situation that you're going through because I don't care what the sickness is I don't care the situation is how you may be suffering and how you may be stressed as a child of God. Because the truth of the matter is a lot of us are physically, mentally, and spiritually stressed and strained. But even as you are going through your suffering, your stress, and your sickness, God still wants you to have some show enough spiritual swag about yourself. Come on now. And you're looking at me. You're not in this room today, Sister Wyndham. You're saying, what in the world is Pastor talking about that I ought to have some show enough spiritual swag about myself as I go through all of the things that he numbered from A to Z? <laughs> well, what I mean by that is, 
that God wants you to know you have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. And God is expecting for you to walk by faith and not by sight. And swag simply means with the S, you got to seek God's face for yourself and by yourself. Because as I told you on Sunday, in the day of your trouble, God wants you to call on him. And he will answer you and you shall glorify him. So you got to seek his face in an intimate way. You got to walk worthy number two of his will. Because the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God cannot keep you. And if you're in a painful predicament right now, God wants you to say what Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, and that is, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And that might be your word tonight, trusty Watts. Because if you seek his face and walk worthy according to his will, God wants you to know even though obstacles are in your way, he will order your steps, he will teach you, he will guide you, and he will show you the way into all spiritual truths. So you got to, number one, what? Seek his face. Number two, you got to walk worthy according to his will. Number three, you got to abide in his presence. Yes, Lord. Because John 15 and 7 says that if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask anything in my name and it shall be given. So you got to seek, you got to walk, you got to abide, and with the G, you got to glorify God in everything that you do. Not only with just the fruit of your lips, but more importantly, through your particular lifestyle. Because Peter is letting us know we must have a mind to live for Jesus. Because we know in order to win this fight and to come out on the other side of our persecution and suffering, we got to take on the attitude of the anointed one and align our attitude and actions up with Jesus Christ himself. And we must be consistent. Re Brother Parham, I'm about to make you a reference. Brother Parham, <laughs> in our, we be consistent in our character, our conduct, and our conversation. Yes, yes. Because God is looking for somebody who is real, who is saved, who is sanctified, and who is Holy Ghost filled. Yes. Yes. Because when we have the mind of Christ, we will also have the morals of Christ. And we will live for him and shine for him in this morally bankrupt society. And that is what Peter is alluding to tonight, Church of God. Because he wants us to live holy lives. And we know that the definition of holy is that God has sanctified us and set us apart for his specific service. That's why we can say with complete confidence tonight, class, that because I have some swag, I broke that down to you. Let the church say, I don't look like I what I've been through. For we know that even though we may in fact be in some frustrating situations right now. I heard your testimony, Diga Latif. I know your testimony, Trustee Watts. And some of y'all don't even know my testimony. I'm in some frustrating situations right now. But guess what? I still got to be found faithful. Yes, yes, yes. Because I know 
that God is thinking about me. And I know at the set time, he is going to arise and he is going to reach down for me with his mighty right hand. And he is going to support me. He is going to sustain me. And he is going to give me the strength to stand because his word says that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Yes, yes. Peter is letting us know in verses 13 to 25 of 1 Peter that we have to learn how to live before God our Father. That is his goal and objective in writing this particular pericope tonight. Because this is what the text is teaching us in these 12 verses. Peter wants us to know that he has told us about the doctrine. He has let us know in verses 1 through 12 mm -hmm. that we have a reason to rejoice because of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So he wants to move us from doctrine, mm -hmm. knowing, to doing. Let the church say we must move from doctrine to doing. Knowing to applying and being what God wants us to be out in the world. Because as you already know, as Romans 12 and 2 says, God does not want us to conform to this world, but instead he wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light to show forth his praise. God has invested an anointing in us. Therefore, we got to walk worthy according to God's will. Yes. For one thing is for sure tonight, church, God is developing us. Mm -hmm. God is directing us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have a duty and responsibility to fulfill as the saints of old used to say way back in the day, the purposes and the plans that God has for our life because undoubtedly we have a charge to keep and a God to glorify even as we go through the crisis of belief. But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory as David said in Psalm 23 in verse number 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're going through this situation and God wants you to know on the other side of your obstacle, on the other side of your praise, there shall be glory after this because he is an omnipotent God. He is an all-powerful God. No wonder as we will see tonight in verses 13 through 16, of today's text. Peter is telling us that we got to be ready to roll up our sleeves and get our heads in the game. Yes. Because putting in that work doesn't mean that we sit on the sidelines mm. and look pretty. Come on now. No. Jesus suffered for our salvation. And if we're going to match his energy, we must be willing to go suffering through the suffering path as well. Because if there is no pain, there is no gain. If there is no cross, there is no crown. Yeah, yeah. For as Paul said, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, when you have a living hope and when you want to live for the God of your salvation, you got to be wholeheartedly willing to forget those things which are behind you and press towards the mark of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Because I know that my grandmother wasn't the only one who taught me what I think verse 16 says. Because verse 16 is alluding to the spiritual truth and reality that when you know better, 
you subsequently what? Do better. As a child of God, you can't just talk a good game. For as you always hear me say, God wants us to turn our affirmations into action. That's why in first number 14 today, I hope you got your Bible, Sosa. Peter says in verse number 14 of today's text, I thought it was verse number 16, but let's go to the Bible from the King James Version. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy. And it says in the uh, 14th verse, reading from the voice translation, be like obedient children as you put aside the desires you used to pursue when you didn't know better. <laughs> but now that you have come into the revelation knowledge of who God is, you know what he is expecting from your life, and you know what he has called you to do, you got to not look back. You got to move forward in faith and be an obedient child and lay aside everything that may get you off of the road that God has purposed and ordained for your life. For God's ultimate goal and aim for your life is that he wants you what Verse number 16 and 17 says, he wants you to be holy just as he is holy. Does your Bible say that in verse number 16? Because it is written, be holy as I am holy. Yeah. Verse 15 says, but as he who called you is holy, you also must be holy in all your conduct. Yes. <laughs> because holiness is not something that you can put on and put off. No, you ought to be wearing it 24 hours and seven days a week because you are out to please God and not people. People may think that you're peculiar. They may think that you're strange by what you do and how you talk. But guess what? They are 100% correct because as Philippians, as 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, you are a holy nation of peculiar people because God has called you out of that mess and allowed you to live for him. And that's why I told you, you got to let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. For as the people of God, wake up and write it down. God wants us to have a fluid faith. And when I say as the people of God, we must possess a fluid faith. I am meaning that if we are going to flourish in the things of God as a family of faith, here at the Metropolitan Baptist Church, we must flow in everything that God has purposed and ordained for our lives. And we must, as John chapter 3 and verse number 30 says, decrease so that the God of our salvation can increase. It is not about us having our own way and being managed. No, we are out to magnify the name of our God and exalt him on high so that other individuals who do not know him can be attracted to him and indeed develop a personal relationship with him. Well, I stop by here to let you know tonight, as I have told you quite often, we are the vessels and the vehicles that God wants to use to bring victory into somebody else's life. We just had the draft, and I was down there on Saturday. Daniel was down there on Thursday and Saturday. And they give the different teams that drafted the different players, Brother Parham, a draft grade. Some people don't like the two quarterbacks, the one from Alabama and the one from Missouri, that Brad Holmes, the general manager, picked. They scrutinized it and said he should have went for a wide receiver, he should have went for a defensive end. But in his eyes, 
they were the perfect pair. Because they fit the scheme in what he sees the team doing. And some people may have written you off as worthless back in the day, but God still sees some value in you. And he still wants to use you for his glory and honor because he knows you have the right testimony and you are the perfect pick for the purposes that he has for your life as you go out there and penetrate the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not by accident that God is prodding you, that God is allowing you to go through whatever you're going through. He wants you to know through it all, he wants you to trust in him with your whole heart. Because he has something for you to fulfill out in the world. Therefore, the only question is, and you need to really and sincerely answer this question yourself. Is God getting the most out of you? Don't answer it. But think about it during your quiet and devotion time tonight. Is God getting the most out of you in life? And are you out there giving him all that you got? Well, yes, I come as Frederick Sampson say to stab you awake with the knife of conscience tonight. Because that is what Peter is doing in this text because he wants us to do an internal investigation of where we are in our faith walk with God to see if we know who we really are, who we represent, and what we are supposed to be about. Oh yeah, I gotta ask you that question, church. Because as verse number 17 alludes to, as a responsible father and as a responsible pastor, God's not going to let any of us get away with the, let the church say sloppy living. By any means. If you have a charge to keep and a God to glorify, God is expecting something out of your life. And if God is chastening you, isn't a good father going to correct you? He's not going to let you just do what you wanted to do. But if you don't choose to listen, you got to know that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. Don't dare make your own bed. You better listen to God and turn from your wicked ways. For it says, if you call on the Father who judges everyone without partiality according to their actions, then you should live in reverence and awe while you live out the days of your exile. Because as the book of Proverbs says, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. So get rid of the sloppy living and start submitting to God's sovereignty and get down on your knees and say, Lord, what is it, as Acts 9 and 6 says, that you would have me to do? And I may struggle to get up, but guess what? Once I get up, I'm going to be on fire for God because I have a passion for God and I have a love for his people. No, we must live in reverence and awe of the anointed one, Jesus Christ, and what he wants to do in and through our lives. Because when we live in awe and reverence of him, even as we are going through our adversity and persecution, go back and listen to the tape, Wendy. That's when you will spiritually understand what swag is all about. I don't got time to go back over it, so thank God we got a tape. You have to, as a child of God, Peter is teaching us tonight to be able to walk with a fearless mentality, Trustee Jackson, as we align our attitudes and our actions up with the anointed one, Jesus Christ. For church, he has anointed us all for such a time as this 
to make a difference. Now they done took the clock from the wall and I gotta look at my 705. Yes. I don't know where my clock is. It stopped. It stopped. No. Amen. So if I go to 830, don't blame it on me. <laughs> so God wants you to know, church, getting back to seriousness, we must have an anointed presence in whatever setting, in whatever situation, he puts us in to serve him with gladness. And because we are connected to him and know that he is the Alpha and the Omega, we must embrace whatever moment that he has us in instead of being out here complaining and thinking of funk. Amar St. Brown said, initially, thank you. <laughs> he didn't want to be here. He told the truth after he signed that big contract. Mm -hmm. He said on draft night several years ago, he was dreading to hear and see on his phone 313 come across the screen. But he said he got with the program. He put in that work. And he saw like-minded individuals and the culture had changed within the organization and he was able to therefore say, this is the best decision that I have ever made and you can't take me from here. Yeah. And the same is true, even in my own faith walk with God, because of the culture changing, you can't take me away from the Metropolitan Baptist Church because I have individuals here who have a mind to work and who are ready to roll up their sleeves and be about the Father's business because they know that only what you do for Christ will last. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. For the truth of the matter is, church, too many of us want to retire when we should be relentless about the one who rules and reigns. For Hebrews 11 and 6 says, that God is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. And you got to have the faith because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Therefore, God's word for you tonight on the camera, on the telephone call, and in the church yeah. is stop being comfortable, content, and complacent in your faith walk with God mm -hmm. when you got work to do. You ought to keep so busy <laughs> serving your Savior that you ain't got time to die even when all H-E-L-L rusts loose in your life because you are so grounded in the things of God and have a deep awareness of who he is since his word has kept you in the midst of it all his word has been a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path and he has given his word to protect you from danger seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to tell one of my members tonight when I call them on the telephone. You thought you were doing something a week ago because you said I ain't going back. <laughs> and that kind of fits with tonight's teaching. Mm -hmm. Because when you come into the revelation knowledge of what God has done in your life, and he has exposed you to his divine attributes of his grace, his mercy, and his loving kindness. You can't go back to your old life. You got to embrace the new life because the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, 2, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, that if any man be in Christ, they are a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So you got to go forward in your faith walk with God. Because if you would have did what outside of what God told you to do, you would be stuck in a situation right now. Yeah. You would be stranded. But thanks be unto God, he gave you the foresight. Mama might have had some bumps and bruises <laughs> along the ride. But somebody say, we made it through. And I'm going to have the testimony that I don't look like what I've been through. Yes. That's why my first point tonight in this teaching, in this 20 minutes we have left is, you got to ready yourselves 
to represent the one who rules and reigns. Let the church say, you have to ready yourselves to represent the one who rules and reigns. Because the Bible, the word of God says, and I'm going to read it from the King James Version of the scripture. It says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And you got to understand that in his particular writings, we're going to look at the fifth chapter, saints of God. Peter must love that word, be sober and to be vigilant. Because he knows that we have to be sober and vigilant as the people of God. Because there is a roaring lion out there who is seeking to devour us. Therefore, we must be on our spiritual cues and we must be alert so that the adversary will knock us off of our spiritual square. But when we ready ourselves and we gird our mind up with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the fact that he rests we will be able to fulfill our assignment because God wants us as Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 10 says to know him and the power of his resurrection but it's not just enough for us to know that good news and keep it to ourselves no we have to even through persecution even through suffering and even through hardships we got to pass that good news on to somebody else. Yes, yes. For God is providentially preparing us to do even greater works in his name. For as I told you earlier, he wants to put us on display. And through our words and our deeds, people will be able to see through us even as we are going through our hardship and hellish situations, that the eternal hope is all around us if we just reach out and grab it and say to ourselves, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. Yes, God is expecting something out of us, Metropolitan, and we have no other choice or option but to fulfill his divine will for our lives. Yes, Daniel, if God has in fact raised you up for a reason and restored your life in such a time as this, through the power of his resurrection, what we talked about last week, you need to stand up not only and say so, but Peter moreover teaches us in tonight's text that we got to serve the Lord and stand in for him and live for him no matter what is going on in our life and no matter where he sovereignly selects us to be to bring him more glory. I'm on St. Brian and want to be there. You don't want to be some of the places you want to be. But God has a purpose and a plan for you and God wants you to know that there shall be glory after this. And the only way that he's going to achieve the glory that he wants out of your lives, let the church say, we must get out of ourselves. We got to forget about ourselves. And number two, we must get ourselves quickly to God. Quit fasting in a hurry. But James said that if we draw near to God, you know the rest. James 4 and 8, God will draw near to us. But church, when we are dedicated to Christ and God alone, we won't be pulled no more in a million directions because we know we got one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And we are therefore going to live holy lives because what's the definition of holy? Somebody needs to put it in the chat. I'm going to go back and look and see before I say it, what's the definition of holy? Holiness is that when you're sanctified and set apart for his specific service. For church, when you align your attitudes and actions up with Jesus and match his energy and mood, what we talked about in the opening of the day's class, 
He will do some downright marvelous and miraculous things in you, through you, and for you. All because you heeded his divine word and call to live holy and to live godly in an unholy and ungodly world. Because you know that God has purposely and distinctly distinguished you out from the crowd. For you must understand, beloved, that your salvation and your commitment to God per verses 13 through 16 of tonight's text causes us to focus our hope and holiness on pleasing God and God alone. For that is the only thing that matters in both the short term and the long term. Metropolitan, we must seek to and strive to be more like the Savior. I guess that's why in this epistle, Peter emphatically proclaims in verse number 13, as I just read a second ago, be ready. Be poised in position, be prepared, and gird up the loins of your mind yes. for what God has already prepared for you. Peter wants you to know you got to have a mind to live for Jesus. If you're going to get out of the mess that you're in, you got to go out there and give God all that you got. And you got to think on these things as. Uh, you know, Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8, think on whatever is true, whatever is just, whatever is noble. Because you have a higher accountability and responsibility. Whereas our parents used to say to us, when you know better, as I said earlier, you do better. And I told you, I'm not making it up because we read it from verse 14 earlier tonight. In other words, verse 14 is saying to us, church, God is calling us to grow up and raise our level of thinking. For when you choose to walk with God, you got to moreover commit your works unto him. And you got to leave some things behind and leave what they would say in the streets. Some Negroes behind. Excuse me, don't write me in letters. I just wanted to make it plain to you. Come on. Because you know that if you were in some of the relationships you were in before, your life wouldn't be going nowhere. You wouldn't be with the person you are right now, or you wouldn't be happy single because they kept you bound. But now you are free to walk in complete victory and to lift your hands up in total praise because you learn how to submit to God's sovereignty even as you go through your stressful situation. Because as the Bible says in Psalm 37 and verse number 25, the steps of a good man and the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. And the Holy Spirit has the power to get you through your hardships. You just got to commit your Self to holding on to God's unchanging hand no matter what is going on in and through your life. Yes. For I think I heard somebody say the other day that when you all are already ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> I know it ain't proper English, but when you are ready as Peter is saying in verse number 13 and you got your mind right and you are raising your level of thinking, when the rubber hits the road, you won't have to think, you won't have to contemplate. No, you just have to go out there and give God all that you got because you know that if you are poised and positioned, the power of God is going to be made manifest in your life. Seeing that you know how to execute self-control, discipline number two, Trustee Jackson, and distinctly look forward to the greater things that God has for you in your not yet. Yes, verses 15 through 16 of tonight's text implies that these divine attributes that God possesses 
we too therefore gather attain them as the people of God and be more like him strive to and seek to be more like the Savior with every step we take and with every move we make for it is saying in verses 16 through 17 Deacon Dixon that God is holy Therefore, if we're striving to be like him, what does he want from us, Brother Parham? If he's holy, what does he want from us? He wants the same thing. He wants us to match his energy, and he wants us to be holy too. Yes, he wants us to represent him and reflect him openly out in the world. Church, did you hear what I said? I said he wants us to reflect him and represent him out in the world. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to do that. But the truth of the matter is, in the kingdom of God, none of us are entitled to take a day off. I don't care if it's a personal day. I don't care if it's a sick day. I don't care if it's a suffering day. I know that if I call one of my members before I got the word of what transpired in their life, and I said, I'm coming to pick you up, she would have been gung-ho. Because she wants to grow through her adversity. Yes, yes. Church, are y'all in here with us tonight? Some yeah, people take yeah. days off and mental health days just to take them off. And they ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but we can, it's good to take a day off in the world with your job, especially if it's stressful. I'm not saying that, but I'm talking about in the kingdom of God. You ought to keep so busy praising your Savior. You ought to keep so busy serving your Lord that you ain't got time to take a day off. Yeah. No, we have been called and commissioned as the people of God to stay in God's awesome presence 24 hours and seven days a week. From Psalm 16 and verse number 11 says that in his presence is the fullness of joy and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh, I hope Reverend Bounds, y'all are spiritually grasping what I'm trying to lay in your lap and teach you tonight. Because if we truly want to glorify God in all that we do, we can afford to have a go-along to get-along mentality. When our identity calls for us to be different. You can look at 1 Peter 2 and 9. We already studied it. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to have God in my circle. Because if I lost all of my friends... If I lost all of my family and still had God in my concentric circle of contact, I can make it through. I may not know too many numbers outside of my best friend's number, my wife's number, and my uh, mother's number. And I just learned that because we done got so cultured with our phones that we don't write people's numbers down on paper anymore. But if that smartphone died, we'll lose our contacts. Somebody said, can you have Kwame give me that number? Is it okay if Kwame has my number? I said, that person already has me. I guess they don't have me locked in. <laughs> but guess what? I don't need Jesus' number locked into my devices. No, I keep him in my heart because I keep his word in my heart so that I won't sin against him and so that I will not live like the world lives when I know God is expecting so much more from me. Yes, yes. Church, are y'all in here with me tonight? For all I'm basically trying to let us know is we got to bring ourselves out of bondage through God's written word. But this text is so telling to teach us tonight in verses 18 and 19 that we can't afford to be all footloose and fancy free as the people of God. When God has called us to be faithful, but that is the old type of lifestyle. And we are supposed to be living in the new living hope. Because as verse 19 says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. 
God wants us to know that our lives should be redeemed and reinterpreted through the precious blood of Jesus Christ itself. The Lamb of God, the precious Lamb of God, who takes all of the sins of the world away. <clears throat> yes, as one biblical commentator and translator said, and I quote, we were redeemed, Metropolitan, as though purchased in a slave market by Jesus Christ himself. No, he didn't pay for us with silver and gold. How did he pay for us, Daniel? He paid for us through the ultimate sacrifice. For as Romans 5 and 8 says, he who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. Give me five more minutes. It's 726. Give me five more minutes and we'll be through because we got to move on to chapter 3 next week. Therefore, I close this particular point out to you tonight, family of faith, saying we can surely come out of the adversity or whatever adversity we are in when we find ourselves with an A-plus on our papers. Mm -hmm. And we will find ourselves with the grade of an A-plus in our examination. If we do what Hebrews 12 and 2 says, look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, suffered the shame, and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. And secondly, as the members of the body of Christ, we must secondly and certainly have been called as a people of God to stand apart from society. Let the church say, we must stand apart from society. Because Romans 12 and 2, we I mentioned it earlier, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as a result of that fact, church, God wants us to be useful and not useless. For our faith will never take us anywhere following in the traditions of men. Because if it's one thing that makes the word of God impotent according to scripture, it is the traditions of men. For remember, Peter opened up this book by telling us in verse number one, that we are absolutely aliens in this world. Mm -hmm. And as kingdom citizens, we have, therefore, a higher accountability and responsibility. And church, that directly leads me to my last and final point to you this evening. Seeing that because we have been sovereignly selected from above and divinely directed by God himself, mm -hmm. we must last but not least from this teaching in 1 Peter, we must, we must remember our Redeemer's requests and requirements for our lives on a regular basis. Because church, God wants us to put some more respect on his name by reciting not only the words to Philippians 2 and 9 that God has a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. No, Peter declares that we must put some respect on the anointed one, Jesus Christ's name. By as verse number 17 in tonight teaches us, living in the world and fearing him, which is in translated living in reverence and awe of Jesus Christ. Yes. For that's who you are supposed to be living this moment in your life for. All because of him. For he has looked beyond all of your faults and he has supplied all of your needs. Yes, if the one who really rules and reigns in your life is truly residing on the inside of you like you say he is, you ought to reflect his awesome presence openly out in the world. Yes, yes. For he wants you to bring him some more glory. 
And he wants you to be an example of what the new life in the new birth in Jesus Christ is all about. For he has surely given you a new outlook on life and directly let you know through his precious blood that your future is indeed as bright as the promises of God. Hence, you can live any old type of way as a child of God. For as Eugene Peterson says in the Message Bible, in verse number 17, and that's why I said you got to get away from sloppy living. Because the Message Bible says in verse number 17, 1 Peter, verse number 17, you call out to God for help. And as we heard on Sunday, what does he do, Reverend Willis? He shows up, he shows himself strong, and he helps us. Because he is a good father that way. But don't forget, he is also not only a good father, he is a responsible father. And he won't let you get by with sloppy living. In other words, he is not going to let you go out there and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. When he has a call and a claim on your life and you ought to be reflecting the fact that you got to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus because he has yet you out of darkness and put you on display because he wants to use you as a demonstration of the Spirit's power to show the world as I began the class with tonight and I'm going ahead and close that you got some show enough swag. Wendy, I told you to go back and look at the tape, but just in case you don't go back and look at the tape, God wants you to know in the midst of your stress, in the midst of your suffering, in the midst of whatever situation that you're going through as a child of God, even if you're sick, he wants you to seek his face. Mm -hmm. He wants you to walk worthy according to his will. He wants you to abide in his presence and he wants you to glorify him, not just with your particular lips, but he wants you to glorify him with your particular lifestyle because you got to have a mind to live for Jesus yes. and you got to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus because morally in a bankrupt world God has called you out to shine for him yes. therefore you must always remember that you are the salt of the earth the yes. light of the world a city on a hill that cannot be hidden Yes. All I'm trying to let you know tonight, in a real sense, as our rushing close is, we got to show some show enough appreciation to the Savior, Jesus Christ himself, yes. for his gracious and redeeming acts. Yes. Because I don't think none of us want to go back to our dead end situations. Do you? Yes. For in the eyesight of God, we were never afterthoughts. He always wanted us to live the abundant life, as John 10 and 10 says, because he is a good shepherd. Thus God says, Metropolitan, we are where we are on purpose. Now it is time for us to perform what God has called us to do. Yes. And I close with this tonight and I'm through. And that is love. We got to love on one another. That's verses 22. 25 says because we already know what the prophet Micah said in Micah chapter 6 what is required of us but to do justice to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God yes we have been charged to love without hypocrisy because how can we say that we love God whom we haven't seen and not love our brothers and our sisters who we see every day. Come on. And it is a good testimony. I was over at one of my old church mother's houses on Sunday. And because I had to rush and give her some flowers. And then go out to dinner with my wife and her friend for her birthday. I said, I'm coming back Monday. But I had to cancel Monday. And I did Tuesday. I said, do you remember Reverend uh, Charles Willis? <laughs> and she said, yeah. He's anointed and gifted. Come on. And she hasn't seen you in years. 
And that is how we are supposed to be. People are to know us through our reflection of the God that we serve and knowing that we can't afford to take a day off. And we got to be real because God wants us to be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Yes, you got to look at your life through the biblical lens of Jesus Christ and his resurrection and say to yourself, I'm ready for whatever comes my way for he has already promised that all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose, that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper and the future can start now. Yes. Because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards us are good and not evil, and he will take us to our expected end. Let us close with two prayers tonight. I'm going to ask that Reverend Willis come and do the first prayer, and then I'm going to ask that Daniel closes us out, as he always closes us out during the Bible study, Saints of God. Let's not forget that tomorrow at 7 o'clock, we are going to have our National Day of Prayer. You can come to the sanctuary, or you can indeed meet us on the telephone line, pray. I had some co-workers, saints of God, ask me, uh, how do I get to that prayer line and National Day of Prayer on May the 2nd? I said, I'll give you the conference call number. God will bless you in ways that you never can imagine. The day I was blessed, some blessings was taken away from me. Because on Wednesday, I like to go and get my hair cut, and I don't go and get some food. So I have a professor, she brings me food every Wednesday. One day she brought me some good Mr. C soul food, and one day she brought me raw Coney Island, and today I haven't opened it yet because I had another blessing of a swarmer from the Bucharest Grill, but I got another blessing of some Jamaican food, and I have some rice and beans I haven't oh, even got to, goodness. and some gumbo, and then somebody brought me indeed a, a stuffed stuffed green pepper, and she said, well, you got too much, Pastor. I'm going to take this and give it to somebody else. <laughs> Reverend Willis again, Daniel. Heavenly Father, we're thanking you, praising you for your loving kindness. We're thanking you for allowing us the privilege of not only fellowship, but study and to hear your word and to have it taught and explained to us now holy spirit we illuminate that word and make it a practical experience in our life for those that are here among us you know, physically dear lord you know the blessings that are required and are desired uh, that we may be able to do those things that you have desire uh, for us to do empower us encourage us strengthen us and uh, provide us the opportunity to do those things that you have provided Lord, we're talking about love. We're talking about respect. We're talking about adoration. We're talking about res uh, receiving you in the splendor of your majesty. Yes. Open our hearts and our minds to know those things, dear Lord, that reveal you to be who you are, not who we want you to be. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to not only study your word, but to live it and to love it. Teach us, dear Lord, how to not only love your word, but to love each other. We want to be able to communicate with each other in such a way that we know and feel and understand uh, in great ways that we are loved, not yes. only by those that are in the congregation, but those who are even on the uh, Internet, that they are praying with us and for us. For those, dear Lord, who do not know you in the part of their sin, bless right now that they will be overwhelmed by your love and come to understand, dear Lord, that it is you and you alone who are our salvation, our redemption, and our justification. We thank you for that, dear Lord. And bless our pastor and his family. Bless him in every area of his life, dear Lord, and in his ministry. May he start to bud uh, and blossom even more and more with each passing moment. Yes. Those things that would stand to hinder him, dear Lord, block them in the name of Jesus. Lift him up where he yes. is, torn down, strengthen him Thank where he's weak, dear Lord. Give him the encouragement to look beyond those things that and those people that stand uh, even unconsciously against him. My Lord. Right now, dear Lord, 
not only for he but his family. There's so many things going on and so much pressure yes. on so many pastors. So many, so much so that we have seen the greatest uh, number of pastors just move away from pastoring and even the church. My Lord. There's so much scandal going on, yes. Lord. We touch and agree right now and declare that your word will prove to be the truth and our salvation. We have the word being taught here and preached here, the unadulterated word, and we're appreciative, dear Lord. We're grateful. And if there be anyone, dear Lord, that has questions, give them the courage to ask the yes. questions and give us the strength, dear Lord, to be able to answer those questions. For those, dear Lord, that wanted to be here and couldn't, bless, dear Lord. For those that could have been here and didn't, bless, dear Lord. For those that want to get here next time, give them not only a reminder, dear Lord, but give them the strength and the courage to make their way to the house of prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Daniel's going to come and pray for those who are sick and shut in. Our first lady couldn't be here because she had to go and take care of her mother. Then she got to run and pick Zion up who's coming back from Anaheim, California, but we want to pray for Trustee Fred Charleston, and we want to pray for everyone who's standing in the need of prayer. Daniel. Lord, gracious God, our Father, you are good and you are great, and you are worthy to be praised both from the rising of the sun to the growing down the sea. So before we ask of anything, oh Lord, we have to say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God, for God waking us up this morning, oh Lord. Yes. For God starting us on our way. For God putting God clothes upon our backs, oh Lord. And I gotta say thank you, oh Lord, that God, you God stop blessing us right now, oh Lord. You have already done enough, oh Lord. <laughs> because God, you have God just God been so good to us. That every God time, oh Lord, we got turn around. You God keep on blessing us. So I say thank you, oh God. Thank you. thank you, oh God, for God being a loving God never leave us nor forsaken us, O Lord. But even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, O Lord, because you are with us, O Lord. Your rod and your staff shall comfort us, O Lord. So God, when we are facing our problems, when we are facing our tribulations, when we are facing our hardships, O Lord, we do not have to worry, we do not have to be afraid, because you are a burden bearer and you are a heavy load sharer. Yes. So, God, we just, God, give you, God, a heavy load, O Lord. We, God, give you our, God, problems, O Lord. We give you our situations mm -hmm. because we know that there's nothing to call for you, O Lord. Mm -hmm. So, God, we, God, continue to, God, pray for God the sick and shut him right now, O Lord. I ask you, Lord, to touch him, O Lord. Touch him, O Lord, because, God, we know, Lord, that we cannot make it without you. And we know you, O Lord, as God. Uh, God, God who God really God loves us, oh Lord, because you are a God who God gave his son for us. And because you God love us, oh Lord, we have to God show love to each other, oh Lord. So I ask you, you God, please forgive us. Make some new heart, a new mind, a new spirit. Let the old things pass away to new come. Because you forgive us for our sins, help us with the forgive. In Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Have a wonderful amen. night. Thank <laughs> you.